Alright, this is the Axial Spider. Uh, what we are going to do is, against a lot of people's uh, better judgment, what we're going to do is we're going to take out the stock Axial system motor and ESC and we were we are going to install a Valenion VXL 3S brushless system um, for the reason of just more torque not really for the speed but just for torque so first I'm going to start off by uh, taking the body off and through the beauty of internet we're going to do it really quick now that the um, top, the cover is off, what we have to do is we're going to have to split the two because the motor on this machine is hidden under here. Um, and what you do is this whole bottom piece splits right off the top piece. So we have to remove the shock towers from the tops. And again, the power of internet we're going to do that for you also also we're going to remove all four tires because the tires are going to get in your way um, so just release all four tires take them off set them aside um, this upgrade is like I said again don't lose these pins either that come out of the shafts um, this upgrade is really not recommended by a lot of people because this is obviously a crawler so it's not really meant for speed and it's not really meant to be you know wheelied and things like that because it will snap axles so like I said what we're gonna do is we're pretty much putting our system in for torque even though it's gonna be the it's gonna have the capability to go fast we're not going to gear it that way. So like I said, we have all four tires off. You want to take the tops of the axle or the uh, shock towers off. Just the tops. You don't have to remove the whole whole shock assembly. And I already did the other two, so I only have two left. Now one. I think the hardest part about this this modification is um, the um, number one the motor is a little bit too big to fit so what you got to do on the Valenian system is the back has a cap <laughs> here's the cap to the motor kind of just like snaps on in place you got to snap this cap off in order to fit the Valenian system into the axial because the motor mount area isn't big enough. So now that we have all four shocks out, this is what we have. Now what we're going to do is there is one, two, three, four, and then four on the other side. We're going to remove these and the whole motor tray is going to drop down. So we're going to do that. So after you remove those four on this side and the four on the other side, we'll be back to do the rest. Okay, now that we removed the eight screws on each side and we split the two like I said, or I'm sorry, the four, four screws on each side and we split the two, just the top half of the axial just kind of rolls over like I said. Now what we have to do is we're going to have to take the uh, motor cover off three screws and keep in mind while you're doing this what screws go where because they do matter the other screw is way down on the bottom here just kind of moves out of the way now the other problem I ran into doing this mod not that it matters because this is a little plastic cover is that when you put the Valenion in 
you are going to have to cut or modify the case so the axle or the, I'm sorry the pinion gear can rest in there without rubbing on anything because it will because the actual shaft you can actually if you really want to get gutsy with this is you can actually take a Dremel and cut part of the shaft but I, I, I don't want to do it because um, if you make a mistake there's no turning back on that so anyway like I said you have to cut a little hole in the cover not a big deal it's probably like a two dollar part if you want to replace it now this is bolted onto the bottom and there's four screws one two three four on the bottom that remove the whole motor assembly This has the, you know, I got this video or this idea by watching another guy put dual motors in the axial, dual brushed motors, but I wanted to put a brushless setup inside for the sheer fact that you're going to get more torque and it's just going to be a lot better. So now we have the whole motor and transmission assembly out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take two screws off the motor, motor mount. Don't lose the washers, very important. As I say that, I think I already lost one. Motor's out. There's the washer. So now you can just set this off to the side because we're gonna put the Valenion on it. Okay, now we're going to rest. First we got to take off pinion gear. Line up the two holes. So now we have the Valenion system back on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the, the pinion and slipper clutch mesh assembly where I've already previously recorded videos on how to do this part. Um, you do not want, you don't want the gear too close and you don't want the gear too far away from each other. The best way to do it is if you can slip a piece of paper inside the two and rotate the gear and not cut through the paper you know you have a good mesh assembly and that's kind of what you want a little bit of a gap between the two gears where it's touching but it's not loose so that's that's done now the next thing we have to do is we have to take the speed control out and get our new Valenion speed control in there's a screw holding it in from the bottom black wrench. Hardest part I've also found about doing this modification is finding a place for the Valenion system, the Valenion speed control, because it does not fit where the axial speed control does. After we take that part out, now we have to get all this taken out, and we are going to do that again using the beauty of the internet. Also, to get into the receiver box, you can access the two fronts, but you cannot get to the two backs, so you got to remove this whole cross member bar. So there's two screws on the top, one on each side, and then there's two going directly in through the bottom. So 
So we're going to remove those four. It's amazing how I could work a video camera and do tools at the same time. And the video camera is actually moving. I got skills. Actually, it's not me holding the video camera. You didn't get, no, you didn't get the joke. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, so once we remove all four screws, we should be able to move that whole bar out of the way, completely accessing the whole receiver box. That way we can plug and unplug speed controls and everything else. Okay, I'll flip this back over. Pop this out of place. There you go. Remove. Now we're going to take off the receiver cover. find obviously it's the one that's a different color take this out of here also you have to remove your on and off switch because that's not going to be used with the one amp system So now we are completely removed the electronic speed control. Now, like I said, finding a place for this is the tricky part because it just doesn't fit anywhere. So that's going to be your challenge, too. You don't have to put it in the same place I do. The last time I did this, I took out the passenger seat and I mounted it on the floor right there, which was a good position for it. But seeing as how you don't have an on and off switch and you have a button to press, you have to have it accessible inside the truck because if you have it on the firewall like you did, you wouldn't be able to turn it on and off. So we're going to stop the video and find a place to put this and then we'll return and finish up. Okay, now that we're ready to reinstall the motor system, the wires have to reach the ESC. So we're going to have to go up through the firewall on the side connect to the ESC but first we're going to remount the motor but this is very important if you do this first if you put the motor in first you're not going to be able to do this put the shaft the drive shaft back on both front and rear before you reinstall the motor screws otherwise you're going to take it all apart and do it again already made that mistake now that we got that in place kind of going to flip this all over we have four screws for the motor. You have 
to line these back up. And hopefully I got the right screws going back in. Well, do okay, After putting the motor back into the bottom and running the wires to the ESC, this is the only place I could find where it would go. You have to remove the passenger seat. Um, or if you get technical and find another place for it, that's, that's cool. Um, also, what I did was I rewired everything, and now I'm going to put this cross member bar back in. And then pretty much it's, uh, you know, put the eight screws back in, mount back up your shocks, put your tires back on, you should be ready to go. Um, that's really all I could think about. And then you would have, you'll have an upgraded Axial Scorpion with the, uh, the XL Millennium system in it, which is going to make it a lot faster, a lot more power. Um, so, you should be able to climb over almost anything. And that's exactly how you upgrade from the regular axial 20 turn motor and ESC up to a waterproof Millennium brushless system. And like I said, if you can come up with another place to put the ESC and you don't want to lose your passenger seat, you know, explore with it. Um, that's the only place I could find it, seeing as how, if it didn't have the button on it that you had to press and it had a normal switch, I could have put it anywhere, but it's got the button that you got to press, so it's got to be accessible. And uh, that's, that's your video on the upgrade for the Axial Scorpion, and um, please go into the, the like and script, uh, like and <laughs> subscribe, and uh, there'll be more videos coming soon. Thank you.